I said, are you a believer till the end? When your phones are low, can you believe it again? All right, all right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the show. You never... uh, hello. Hey, Bill, how are you? Ian, good afternoon. Thanks for having me. Awesome, awesome. Well, everybody, welcome to Tokenmetrics Live. I'm your host, Ian Bellina, I'm being joined by Bill Noble. And in Tokenmetrics Live on the agenda today, we'll, we'll be going through a brand new section, well, it's actually an old section just now with a brand new title for this segment called Crypto Therapy. Regardless of whether it's a bear market or bull market, we're here to go through therapy with you and really just discuss crypto from Bitcoin to Ethereum to altcoins. And then due to popular demand, we now have a special segment called Top 5 Cryptos of the Week, where our team goes through and does our analysis and opinions on different cryptocurrencies happening from the best altcoins out there because people are still looking for high value altcoins. And we also go through and give you analysis on what Tokenmetrics thinks is happening right now. All right, with that being said, Bill, how's, it, how, how's your week been? How's the market? How's everything? Well, my week has been good. Uh, and obviously we're all in a better mood today, uh, at least in the big coins. Uh, not so much in alts, but we're doing good. I'm good, doing good today, and so is the market. So, and I've got lots of uh, lots of insights, and uh, I've got my Santa list ready. Nice, nice. Okay, so shout out to Nag Trending. Welcome, welcome. He's saying I want BTC for Christmas. <laughs> Don't we all? <laughs> we're 
Then uh, shout out to Sebastian. He's saying BTC to 60K. That would be quite the Christmas. That would be three times as much as 2017 Christmas. <laughs> Hello, Martin. Thanks for joining. Uh, Senpai, thanks for joining. Yes, we are looking into DAG. Our team is currently reviewing that. Uh, I think part of the score might already be in tokenmetrics.com, uh, but our team is, is not fully done with the review, but we are currently doing that. Alice, hey, Alice, welcome. Glad to have you here. Retrograde, what do we think of VeChain? VeChain is already in tokenmetrics.com. We'll cover that as well towards the end of the show. Daniel, welcome. Hey, guys. Diego in the house. Diego 100X. Matt, welcome, Matt. Big BTC to 10K in January. Well, stay tuned. Stay tuned. We'll go through the 30-day price prediction for Pokemetrics. All right, guys. Thank you all for joining. Lay, Angus, everybody. And by the way, so if you, if you don't know, tokenmetrics.com has already launched. For those who are, who are maybe brand new watching this for the first time, go to tokenmetrics.com to sign up. Tokenmetrics is a data-driven investment research platform. So we provide human capital, so expertise from people like me and Bill and others and our team of data scientists. And we also give you data analytics and we also leverage machine learning to make you a better investor. So the whole premise is to help you find the undervalued projects before anybody else does, before even the big funds have discovered those projects. And we have a pretty good track record. Yes, we're not perfect, but we've made lots of investment in the, in the space and our track record is still pretty good, despite the wins and losses, even in a bear market. And most importantly, token metrics can be leveraged as a platform to help you filter out the scams. Because the main issue as an investor is there's so many cryptocurrencies out there and you have to filter out those scams. So definitely go to tokenmetrics.com and sign up. We have a free trial. Let me share my screen so people know exactly what I'm talking about. And yeah, I mean, so somebody did tell us two weeks ago that tokenmetrics had waves as bullish and waves had has done a 2X, which is pretty impressive, especially in this market. So I, I think if, if we can have more, success, more, more successes like that, then I think people will really see the value in having a platform like this. All right, with that being said, let's do quick intros because not everybody here has watched us before. So Bill, tell people about yourself. All right, I'm a technical analyst by trade. Uh, I've been doing it since 1991 when I was an 18 year old intern when Iraq invaded Kuwait. So that was my introduction to doing charts in chaotic environments. Uh, I proceeded to do it for institutions at Morgan Stanley and Goldman, retail investors at Charles Schwab. Uh, I met Charlie Schrem, and you know he was sort of my crypto professor. And then I combined all my skills that I learned, and I've joined Token Metrics to help you navigate and make the best decisions possible. All right. Thank you, Bill. And I'm Ian Melina. I'm the founder of Token Metrics. I'm also a partner at 100X Advisors, which is a blockchain investment and advisory company. Check us out at 100xadvisors.com. Prior to that, I was working in data and analytics, even before crypto. Uh, I've been featured in the Wall Street Journal in their private newsletter for using IBM Watson analytics to predict March Madness. I also do have a, a passion for bad basketball. I would say basketball is what got me into analytics and data <laughs> because I always had this passion for, for video games and data. But before crypto, my ultimate dream after figuring out I wasn't tall enough to be a basketball, basketball player was to be a GM, a general manager for a basketball team. And there was this trend where everything was going towards being big data and analytics. And I looked into it and I, was, I, asked, I told myself, what if we could use data and analytics to figure out which basketball players would become all-stars. And that was a problem that I, I was just passionate about. So I went down this rabbit hole, reading all these different books on analytics and basketball. And anyway, didn't really get into that, but now I'm here doing token metrics. So I always joke with my friends that if it wasn't for crypto, I would probably be still be doing the same thing. I'll be leveraging data and analytics, but for basketball. And prior to IBM, I was working at Deloitte Consulting. All right, so welcome to the show. 
So let's start off with the question of the day. We're in holiday season. Christmas is right around the corner. Now, for those who are participating in other holidays, happy holidays to everybody. The question of the week, what coin do you want in a Santa airdrop? This is a very tough question. So first up, we have Binance, BNB. Then we have Cosmos, Atom, Matic Network, VeChain, VET, and Sorry, that, that should be Tezos, XTZ. So what coins do you want? If Santa was going to do an airdrop and just give you free coins or cryptocurrencies, which ones would you want in your portfolio? So go to menti.com, that's M-E-N-T-I.com and use the code 617632. That's 617632. Bill, so what coin would you want as an airdrop from Santa, if you had to pick one. Well, if I if I had to pick one uh, from Santa, I would actually try Tezos. Tezos. Tezos has been performing very very well so far. Amazing, right. and, surprising. Yeah, and I'm I'm interested. I'm getting more and more interested in proof of stake, which I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. Tezos is a proof of stake coin. Yes, yeah. Tezos is a proof of stake coin. Right. Yeah, I'm getting really interested in that as a as a technical analysis theme. Yeah, I mean, so for me, if I had to pick one, let me just kind of go through each each coin and just kind of say what I like and don't like. Binance has done amazingly well. I mean, Binance is is one of the best coins of all time, performance wise. I mean, congratulations to anybody who was part of their ICO back in 2017. They've really executed beyond belief. Uh, but I do question whether it's reached its potential, that the growth opportunities in Binance are not there because Binance is now top 10 market cap. Cosmos, Cosmos is hovering between top 25 market cap. I think Cosmos does have more potential than BNB, than Binance at the moment. Uh, Matic Network, I think, definitely has lots of potential. It's not even in the top 100 market cap. So especially if you factor in the, the dump from this month where it dumped 50% because of whatever FUD was there or whatever whales were selling, the technology is still solid, but the fundamentals can get better. VeChain, VeChain I would say it's a decent project, but I would not, put, I, I, I would not want that in my airdrop. Tezos, Tezos has been for performing well lately. So if I had to pick coin, I would say Cosmos. Then I would say Matic or Tezos. Now that's just kind of my personal thought process, but let's see what Tokimetric says. So I, I actually, I think let's do, do that at the end of the segment because we do have a section called top coins of the week, which will have most of these coins in there. But, right. okay. And there's the, there's the code on menti.com up at the top. Yes. Yeah. Once again, the code is 617632. So let's see who the winner is. Yeah. Tezos. Wow. Okay. Very interesting. Very interesting. I'm actually kind of, I'm quite surprised. Yeah, I am too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what, well, What's your take on Tezos, Bill? Well, you know, I looked at it, you know, I think Tezos versus the dollar can get to two, right? I mean, it broke out of kind of a, a, a triangle formation. So I think it can get there. Um, I also think it's really interesting that Tezos seemed to do okay as Ethereum kind of avalanched. So I, I'm just really interested in it because it can go to two and I want to see if it can get there. And if it's like a typical alt where it kind of gets to its price target and then dumps or whether it's like cosmos where it kind of goes up and then it consolidates for a while and then moves yeah. higher again. Right. I mean, so to kind of add, add on to that. So here I'm showing tokenmetrics.com's profile for Tezos. So fundamentals are decent. Technology is, is definitely good. So I can definitely see why people 
have been gravitating to Tezos. Initially, they had some challenges with launching and governance issues between their foundation and Switzerland, uh, but it seems like they've taken care of that and that they've now moved on. And now I think earlier that the technicals were, were pretty bullish. So that's why it had a, a, a brief run up. Um, and, and I think it's done, done like a three X this year. I saw somebody post in Telegram that it's done a three X this year. So it's definitely been a high performing coin. They added staking on, on some major platforms. I believe on, on Coinbase or, or some other exchange, uh, Coinbase Custody, I believe has Tezo staking as well. Let me see if it's down here in the news. Okay, actually, this is some old news here. But overall, though, definitely Tezos is one to, that I w- wouldn't really be disappointed in. Now, if we go to the, the price prediction model for Tezos, uh, for the last month, it's, it's, it's been decent, about 78%, almost 80% accurate. Um, if we go here, and so Tokenmetrics is saying the price is going to be pretty much neutral. So it's nothing too drastic in, in terms of the price going up or the price going down. Now it does give us a range. So think of this as if we, for the 30, 30 day price prediction, it's telling us the price could fall anywhere between a dollar and seven cents and a dollar and 79 cents. And then it's predicting about a dollar 41 cents. Now, this, mind you guys, this, we, we do know this portion of the of the price predictions is kind of confusing to some people. So we are planning to make this even a lot easier for people to, to understand. So stay tuned. In the, in the coming week or two, we'll make big updates to tokenmetrics for the price predictions. Now, if we compare Tezos to Bitcoin, so let's open up performance metrics here. if my computer is working. <laughs> okay, I think there's, there's, there's a glitch here. Uh, but anyway, so if we look at Tezos bill, what have the technicals told you over, over, over the last few days or weeks? All right, well, let me, uh, let's, let's share a screen if I can. And uh, yeah. let's talk about that. And once again, if you have any questions, send in your questions to menti.com, M-E-N-T-I.com. Use the code 617632. That's 617632. Okay, give me a second. Okay, here we go. All right. So let's find Tezos and check out the chart. Okay. So a couple, a couple interesting things going on on the Tezos chart, right? Mm-hmm. You've got the breakout from this triangle pattern here, okay? And you see how this arrow that we drew last time points to sort of the green line? So Tezos is currently doing a battle as to whether or not it can hold at its 21-day moving average, okay? This is why I wanted Santa to airdrop it to me right? Because it's a little bit below the moving average. All right. So I want Santa to airdrop this so I can pick it up and not freak out if it goes to a dollar 40, because normally when you have triangles, you travel the distance of the triangle, right? That's this bar here. From the point of the breakout here, you go up. I know that's a mouthful, but that's how I think Tezos gets to two. Okay. So think of it this way. Something coils up and they wind up the spring and wind up the spring and wind up the spring and then boom, it pops. So we'll see if Tezos can get to its triangle targeted too. And that's why it's a, you know, it's kind of a Santa airdrop favorite. All right. Very nice. Very nice. Uh, If anybody has any thoughts on Tezos, feel free to comment in the comments below. And let me see if we have some questions here. Um, people are just saying they love crypto. Yes, this is live, everybody. This is live. We're live streaming. This is going out to everywhere, to Twitter, Periscope, YouTube, Facebook, everywhere. Somebody's talking about Loki. Hey, Costa. Costa's in the house. Okay, so no no comments on Tezos. Now, yeah, I think Tezos is definitely one to keep in the portfolio, especially if it's an airdrop. 
I mean, first of all, I don't think anybody has ever really been mad for any airdrop, but <laughs> we're talking about the best ones. If Santa was going to give us a good coin and not really a shit coin or a lump of coal, Tezos would definitely be a good candidate. All right, so let's go to the next question in our, in our survey here. Uh, let me go back to my screen. What would you hope for in 2020? So 2020 is right around the corner. It's a new tide, a fresh new start. What's the biggest thing you, you hope for? What's the biggest thing you, ex you hope to happen in 2020? Is it the Bitcoin ETF gets accepted? Is it the, st the stock market has a huge correction and maybe that benefits cryptocurrencies? Or is it having a pro-crypto US president? Because we know how America has really, has really been behind when it comes to innovating and regulating cryptocurrencies. Um, then is it a chance to buy Bitcoin below $6,000? Uh, me personally, um, I don't think so. <laughs> or is it Amazon accepting Bitcoin? Uh, I do know Amazon does take the gift cards that, that some people can purchase with Bitcoin, but I'm saying Amazon full on accepting Bitcoin as a form of payment. Which one would you hope for in 2020? Tell us at menti.com. That's M-E-N-T-I.com. Use the code 617632. That's 617632. Uh, Bill, which one would you hope for in 2020? Well, I'm going to take the controversial choice and I'm going to tell you why. Um, I'm going to go with a pro crypto US president. And I think the Chinese and the Russians love gold, nothing against gold at all. But I would love it if the president of the United States would stand up and go, you know what? Gold's okay but you guys can keep it. It's a rock. We here in America, we like code and we're doing crypto, right? And I could just, you know, imagine all the cryptoids in the world standing up and cheering, right? Maybe I should run for president. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> I think you should. Somebody's saying they wish for alt season 2020. All season, right? Hey, we forgot about that. We forgot. We forgot who our audience was. Forgot about all season. Yeah. Uh, hey, Kevin. Yes, this is live as in today. Okay. Um, Kevin is saying he's brand new to crypto. Starting with seventy bucks, what should you do? Uh, if you're starting with seventy bucks, I say definitely do research. Learn more about the space. Only invest what you're willing to lose. The money you you put in, only put in what you think. Only put, the, put in money you're comfortable losing. That's the first thing I would say. Then just educate yourself and use a platform like tokenmetrics.com to help you filter out the scams because there's so many scams in crypto. So I definitely recommend you check out tokenmetrics.com. We do have a free trial and we also have uh, Bitcoin is, is free. Hey, CC, thanks for joining. Thanks for the kind words. Uh, all right. So for me, if I had to decide what do I want in 2020? I mean... So many good, I mean, I, I would wish for everything on, on, on this list in a way, because that's kind of the, the culmination of crypto going mainstream. But I would say, I would agree with you. I think a pro crypto US president, the regulation in the US is so behind. I'm tired of people walking on eggshells about issuing tokens or how to regulate and everything around the whole ecosystem. I think if we had somebody who just went in there and said, you know what, crypto to the moon, Bitcoin to the moon, uh, all of us would be happy because that's our lives. I mean, for me, me, me and you, Bill, we're full-time in crypto. So for somebody who is going to be pro crypto and blockchain, that will transform the entire industry. So to me, that's, that's what I would hope for in 2020. All right, so let's see what people say here. Oh, it's a tie. Pro crypto US president and stock market correction. Very interesting, very interesting. I wonder why people said stock market correction. Uh, what's your take on this, Bill, in terms of the stock market correction? All right, well, I can definitely answer that question. <laughs> How annoying is it? Studio audience, seriously, how annoying is it to watch Bitcoin either go down or slump 
And QQQ and Google and even crypto disruptor Facebook is at a, almost at a new high. How hard is it to watch the stock market bubble go up every day and crypto just sort of sit there and go lower? Oh, please. You know, it's like, I don't know. It, it, it's like some sort of fashion trend where you just look at it and go, God, I could never wear that. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's like uh, speculative uh, fever applies to the stock market and crypto's getting wrecked. But really? Come on. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So let's take some questions from the audience here. I see. Yeah. Kevin is saying $70 is fine to lose. Hey, I mean, start off with whatever it takes. Not n every large investor in crypto began as a small investor. I mean, when I first joined the space, I went on Coinbase, put a hundred bucks to buy Bitcoin, hundred bucks to buy Ethereum because that's the money I was comfortable losing. And then I began educating myself about the space. As I began learning more about the space, over the course of several months, I got more comfortable and began buying more. So my dollar cost averaging at that time got larger and larger and larger. And as in the bull market, it, it reached a point where I was making larger and larger investments. So I would say, don't hop right in, gradually phase in. And as you have more success, then you can make larger investments. Uh, as Bill says, uh, you have to earn the right to- what's Take the risk. Take right, risk. I, can, I can weigh in on that on two points. I say you have to earn the right to take risk. That means if you make a decision and you buy and it goes higher, then you've got the comfort and the capital to buy the next dip, right? So you've got to make those couple initial decisions right before you can start adding to a winning position. Um, I think the other thing that I would tell our friend with the $70 is there is a huge difference between watching Bitcoin just without any money in the game and watching and learning crypto when you've, say, got 50 bucks invested, even a small amount of money. Let me tell you, when your money goes in, something happens to your mind and you just laser focus and you learn at a faster rate. So even if somebody has a small amount of money, put it into something and watch that something move and your learning curve will be exponentially higher. You'll learn faster if you have a little money in the game. All right. All right. So, I mean, I, I, I totally agree. Having skin in the game makes you look into things at a whole different level you typically would not do. I know once I began... Once I even had just $100 in Bitcoin, I was watching the news every single day <laughs> because I was like, I want to learn to see how my money is doing so that I can know whether or not to put in more money and whether or not this is going to be something big with potential in the future. All right, so, uh, okay, so somebody's asking about Elrond. Hey, Ian, when you add Elrond, when will you add Elrond into token metrics? What do you think about this project? Uh, good question. So we are in the process of adding new cryptocurrencies into token metrics. So stay tuned for that. Uh, at the, at the, for the time being, if you want to submit any cryptocurrencies, just go to feedback.tokenmetrics.com and submit any tokens you want us to look, look into. So if we filter out here, so people have sent in the following tokens and our team is currently working on DAG, Constellation, and Ultra. So uh, for those who have early access, uh, so that's the investor plan and above. Yeah, I think we, we do have the, the rating currently being worked on. It's not finished at, for the time being. Our, our team is still, is still doing it. So this might not be the final score. So stay tuned on that. But yes, our, our team is taking in token requests. And people always ask, how do you submit tokens? Go to feedback.tokenmetrics.com. So right now, we're, our team is looking into Constellation, into Ultra. Uh, any other tokens you want to submit, send them here. We did, did look into L Elrond early in the year. And there, this was on, on our old spreadsheet. And the rating was good. Uh, but now our system for the actual site has shifted drastically. Drastically. So things might change. Uh, I don't think it's, I still think it's 
it's going to be a decent project. Um, but obviously things have shifted now because now it's trading live on exchanges. So we have to factor in the T and, and the technical analysis. Ha have you looked into Alron Bill? Any, any comments on that? Uh, I, I have not. We can, uh, I can take a shot if you want me to try to share my screen and pull it up on TradingView. Yeah, sure. Okay. Let me see if it comes up. Okay, so you get to kind of watch me. All right, no sure I work with. So it looks like it doesn't look like we have a lot of price action to work with. Okay, but one of the things I do think is interesting about the way this is moving lately. Draw this. Okay, so that first move higher in in this coin on a four hour chart, it looks like it's what's called impulsive. That means it's a, a wave that has five parts. So what does that mean? Well, that means when it's moving higher, it's moving higher like it may want to keep going. So if you like this project, you might say to yourself, okay, if there's a dip to say, you know, right here, you know, maybe that's around 24, okay? Not too far from where we are right now. You know, maybe you try to buy a little. So, I mean, there's not a lot of price action to read, but, you know, it doesn't look terrible. All right, all right. Thank you, Bill. Okay, so let's go to, let me, let me share my screen again here. So let's go to the next segment. I want to go through the top rated tokens for the week for token metrics. Because this is, this is something people always ask us every single live stream. So we made this a segment. All right, so the top met metrics rankings for this week. Once again, this is just our opinion based on the data and the machine learning and all the ratings. So we factor in fundamental analysis, technical analysis, technology and code reviews to come up with this list. So these are the top five highest rated cryptocurrencies on the platform. So first up, Bitcoin. Bitcoin is still king. Ethereum, no surprise, Ethereum is still king. Then Blockstack, STX. So for those who are subscribed to Tokenmetrics, you saw that we published a score for this in the system and it shot up. And this is definitely something that's under undervalued. They're down over 90, over 70% from their public sale price that they had on CoinList. So the fact that it's dipped a lot makes it even more undervalued in our opinion. Zcash, in terms of overall score, Zcash is, is number four and then Dash. So this list is, is very conservative. This is taking a long-term view. So if we hop into the site here and we, and we just sort by grade, you guys can see here the, the, the ratings. So we have Bitcoin, Ethereum, Blockstack, Zcash and Dash. And then to round up the, the top 10, we have Binance, Zero X, Eternity, Neo, and Cardano. So we think this is a pretty solid list. Uh, as you can see here, uh, if we go through and say and sort purely just on fundamental grades, the projects with the best fundamentals are Bitcoin, Ethereum, Holochain, Monero, Zcash. So that's the top five. Now we've been adding more and more tokens to this. So if we look at purely the technology. We have Bitcoin, Ethereum, Blockstack, Binance, and Matic Network. Uh, so as you can see, lots of crossover with the list of cryptocurrencies on, our, on, on the Santa airdrop question we had from, from earlier. But I mean, if, if, if we're long-term looking at crypto and we think crypto has lots of potential, in our opinion, these are the top five coins we would have in a portfolio. And I think most of them on this list, most people have heard of, except for Blockstack. Blockstack is one that's new, but the, the technology is, is very, very solid in our opinion. And we've gone through, done a deep dive and review on that. Um, I won't show that here because we want to respect the people who 
are paying for tokenmetrics. So if you want that, you have to sign up for, for the free trial at tokenmetrics.com. But we have a deep dive in-depth report similar to what we have for Bitcoin. So if you, if you pull up Bitcoin here, we have te technical summary, we have the fundamental analysis summary. So we have the same thing for all, all these different cryptocurrencies. And then we also cover IEOs, initial exchange offerings. And we do have an IEO in our opinion that has lots of potential. Well, they raised, it's, it's a US company, they raised money uh, a while back. They've not launched yet because of just the uh, regulations happening here in the US, but it's definitely one to keep on the watch list. I wouldn't participate in any IEOs myself, uh, but if I had to play in a very good IEO coming out, I would say I would wait for it to launch on exchanges, see how the price action is, see what Tokometrics tells us, see what Bill tells us with his expertise, and then look to accumulate. So I think what's happened with Blockstack is textbook because here we have a great project coming out, somewhat overhyped, even in, in, a, in, a, in a bad market, and it goes down over 70%. That's when the smart investor comes in and starts to accumulate. And I think that's really the, the best strategy in this market. Now, what's, what's your take on that, Bill? Okay, well, <clears throat> I've, got the, uh, I've got the block stack chart all ready to go here. All right, perfect. All right, and uh, let me just let me share my screen. Okay, so on block stack, right? This is the four hour chart. Now, if this isn't the cleanest, you know, looking, if you just follow my cursor, you know, you do the first leg, then you correct and everyone goes, oh, I don't believe it. And then, I don't know, we go, oh, holy cow, Token Metrics likes it. And then <laughs> it comes back down and then they make kind of a euphoric new high, right? I mean, that, that's a classic start of a trend, right? So now we're probably in a trickier consolidation phase. But, you know, just more so than that other coin that we looked at, you know, these are things where you're looking to buy the dip. You know, I think that's a theme across alts in general, right? You don't want to FOMO into anything, anything. Yeah. But if you got a quality thing, you know, looking to, you know, short of a Santa airdrop, buying a dip is the next best thing. And to add on to that, so IEOs, Unfortunately, they're, they're pump and dumps. Uh, so always be careful buying any IEO on exchanges. Uh, that, that's why even I, I don't participate in IEOs. I think it's, better, it's, it's healthier to be patient, be cautious, wait for all the, the hype to die down. And once the price tanks, that's when you come in. You, you, you basically, you're looking to buy a discount. You're trying to buy something undervalued. So the whole purpose of an IEO is for it to pump and exchanges raise capital and put that capital towards supporting the market and in a way kind of artificially inflating the price. So that's why I avoid IEOs, wait a few months for it to kind of peter out and then look to possibly get in. Now, somebody is saying the price we have for, for Blackstack is wrong. Yes, so we are aware of that. That's not our, our issue. It's an issue with coin market cap. So so coin market cap has an issue where they don't have the correct price for block stack and we're importing that price from coin market cap. So I did see on Twitter, the block stack CEO has been complaining, trying to get coin market cap to fix the price, uh, but they've not done that for some reason. But uh, actually I'm trying to share my screen here. So once they do fix that, then it will also update on our end automatically. Because they are there, if you go into Coin Market Cap, they have two tokens for STX. The stocks, which was an ICO back in 2017, the one that Floyd Mayweather promoted, STOX. Then there's also Blockstack. So because they have Blockstack on there and that, but they don't have the, the correct data for Blockstack, so that's affecting anybody who pulls in that data from Coin Market Cap. But yeah, I mean Blockstack is definitely one. Uh, I was trying to reach out to see if we can get an interview with the team, uh, but ha still have not heard back from them. Okay, now All right, so up next, let me, sorry guys, just 
bring back my screen here. So now let's let's go back here to the list. So somebody was saying it's free to sign up. Yes, for anybody who signs up, you do get a 14 day trial. So two weeks free to token metrics. And then from there, we do have different plans available. So if you just go here to subscription, we have the different plans available. So basic plan gives you access to Bitcoin and top 20 ratings, meaning that you can see the scores, but you can't view the details and portfolio tracking. We recently added portfolio tracking. So, and people have been giving us good feedback on that. We fixed the issues around that. Then we have the hardware plan, which gives you top 20, everything, code reviews, fundamentals, TA, and also our email newsletters where Bill provides weekly chart packs. So TA in your email every single week and also videos as well that we don't really publish anywhere. And then investor gives you top 100 and professional gives you everything plus also a private investor network. Okay, so I forgot what I was going to do next. <laughs> oh, portfolio. So we did add portfolio to token metrics. So you can come in here, track what you're currently holding in your portfolio. We also give you the, the grades for the different cryptocurrencies in your portfolio. So you have an idea of how you're doing. Uh, we have different data points we track for you, such as max drawdown, time underwater, the alpha, the beta. So we're constantly adding new things to token metrics. So stay tuned for that. This is just a model portfolio I have here. So I definitely recommend this. This part is free. So it's nothing but positive for you. So go into token metrics, add your portfolio, track it, see how you're doing. Um, and we have different other data points available, alpha all, and all that. Okay, so I believe Bill has to, to leave. So with that being said, uh, any last words, Bill, before you, you head out? Yes, one, one wish for Santa. <clears throat> Uh, in 2017, the top of the market was right around December 17th. My Santa wish is that December 17th, 2019 was actually a bottom. Um, you know, this is not technical analysis or portfolio advice. It's just my Christmas wish. So happy yeah. holidays to our audience and to you, Ian, and uh, take care. You too, Bill. Thank you. Take care. All right. Just landed on the moon in a Lambo. All right, all right. So now, time for the next segment. Time for the AMA. Let's hop into the AMA. If you have any questions, just ask them on Menti. All right. So let's let's pull up the the AMA. Okay. Let me. So we covered our round. Let's mark that as answered. And then the question, next question was, which three altcoins are good investments for one to two years? Well, I mean, the ones we just covered. <laughs> that's, that's, that's why we built tokenmetrics.com, people. So it can answer this question for you because coin market cap on those other sites don't really tell you that. So once again, it's very simple. You sign up for a free account, just go in here, sort by grade, and boom. It tells you, in our opinion, based on, on the data, the cryptocurrencies we're most bullish on. Now, a free account gives you access to, top, to, to the top 20 market cap. It won't give you access to. So if you have a free account, you, you probably are not seeing BlackStack because the market cap is very, very low. Actually, I think this might only be appearing for professional so but if you watch this live stream with us every single sunday you do get the, an update but it won't be in real time so i would say the value add of subscribing to this with the other premium plans is in real time because these grades change based on different data points so as data is changing we're giving we're doing the analysis and crunching the data to give you the what we think are the best cryptocurrencies in real time which nobody is really doing last time I checked. So we think this is needed to filter out the scams and to find the profitable investments. Okay, let's go to the next question. Okay, 
as long as it's updated, price predictions on token metrics. So right now the price predictions on token metrics update every 24 hours. So there, there is a known issue because we're, we're dealing with a global audience. So people are in different time zones. So it might be showing the price prediction for the last 24 hours for somebody in, in a country who's in a different, who's in a, a far away time zone than us or far behind. So it's all relative. But in general, we are looking to make some new improvements on this. So one of the th two things we're looking to add, we're looking to make this update every three hours. So stay tuned for that. I think if we can do that, that would be big because we learned with Matic Network, sometimes updating after 24 hours is not fast enough <laughs> because Matic, for those who don't know, dumped 50, over 50% in like a split second because that's crypto for you. That's a 24 seven market. So we're looking to make this faster to make it happen or update every three to six hours maybe for all the cryptocurrencies we have. So we have price predictions for lots of crypto cryptocurrencies in here. And then we're also looking to provide historical context so that you can go through and see the predictions. So for example, the predictions we had for Bitcoin uh, from December 11th, uh, two days ago, was $5 off, which is pretty amazing. So we're definitely very excited for the potential of this. Uh, I was speaking to somebody, somebody was telling us that this should be the most expensive part of the platform because everybody's trading Bitcoin. And if we can predict Bitcoin with 90% accuracy, we're basically making people's careers. <laughs> uh, so, so for the first 1,000 people who join, you do get this for free, the, the, the Bitcoin, the basic plan. Uh, but after the 1,000, we'll start charging for it because if, if we can keep this up then and, and people are possibly printing money, then it can't be free forever. <laughs> it's just a basic uh, economy. But yeah, so hopefully that answers your, your question about the price predictions. Do you see Blockstack bottoming already? So if we're saying Blockstack has bottomed, we have to, I'll defer to token metrics. So if we pull up Blockstack here, I would say, let's go to the technicals, technical analysis. So we see here, it's neutral. So, and not quite. I mean, so Bill did give us TA, technical analysis on Blockstack saying it was on an uptrend. So, it could possibly be a trend reversal, but uh, according to tokenmetrics, not quite yet. But if we look at the EMA, the 200 EMA, well, it's not been out for 200 days, so it's kind of hard to say for this. Uh, but for at least the, the, the nine day EMA is bullish, nothing bearish in, in terms of EMA. So I would say it's close to it. Uh, not, not quite yet. When, when this turns bullish, then I think we, we can say it's, it's bottomed. But I mean, lots of bullish signs, lots of bullish signs here. And I don't think the price prediction is, is, has been built yet because we just added this recently. Now, and this, I think we had to restart the performance metrics server. So this is not functioning at the moment. So if we go just purely based on the TA, I would say it's definitely one to keep on the watch list want to keep on the watch list because they're down 70% from the public sale price. So, and the, the technology is solid. I mean, and the fundamentals are, are, are pretty good too. So it, if you had to pick an altcoin with a very low market cap, so right now ignore this data because this is, this is coming from coin market cap. I'll show you guys the, the issue we're, we're having with coin market cap. So if we put in STX, we have two, right? So block stack data has not been entered in coin market cap. And that, that's where we pull in our, our numbers from. So that's why we're, we also have the issues. So because coin market caps API is only pulling in this, this other STX. So until they, they add block stack on here. I mean, 
I think it's actually a positive because that's how early it is <laughs> to get into Blackstack. Uh, it's not even on coin market cap officially yet, but we we have discovered that this is a good project, undervalued, and the technicals look like it's possibly close to bottoming out or to a possible trend re reversal. So I'm not saying go out and FOMO buy into this. No, I'm saying we now put this on the watch list and we watch and we watch and we possibly pounce when the right when the timing is right. Now, well, when will you know if the timing is right? Well, I would say when the technical when the technical analysis grade says bullish. Um, but in general, I mean, if, if you're thinking super long term, though, I mean, getting it at seventy percent is not too bad. But if you're really trying to time it, I would say also, I mean, if if you if you're planning to buy something in this market, then yes. It's, in our opinion, it's the third best cryptocurrency to buy just after Ethereum and Bitcoin right now. So hope, hopefully that, uh, that answers your questions. Okay, next question. Because somebody's saying Cosmos. Uh, what, what about Cosmos? <laughs> you have to give me more to work with. If you're saying to pull up Cosmos, Okay, let's pull up Cosmos. Let us share with you our research on Cosmos. Cosmos, I mean, creme de la creme. This one is a keeper. This is a beauty. Fundamentals over 80%, technology over 80%, technicals. I mean, it's basically just about the technicals. Right now, the technical analysis is not there, but when it gets there, when it turns bullish, Cosmos long-term, uh, this is one I would definitely want from a Santa airdrop if I uh, if I had to choose. Cosmos is definitely one to keep an eye on. And let me see if I can get any other info on this. All right, so here we have, let's share price prediction on this. So price prediction over the, the next 30 days or so is pretty bullish. Uh, going from about, three, from about 386 to 421. And obviously, it could go all the way down here. So you got to be careful. This past performance is not indicative of future results. But uh, I mean, Cosmos long term, everything checks out. Everything checks out. Oh, I think somebody was asking, was answering the question for the, the survey. OK. Next question, all the big exchanges like Binance, BitMEX, et cetera, are getting or trying to get US regulation approval, except for KuCoin. I love KuCoin, great platform. Why haven't they tried to get US SEC approval? Very good question, very good question. Uh, now disclosure, I was a KuCoin Global Titan ambassador with them in 2018. So I was, I was working closely with the KuCoin team. Uh, kind of like a, as an ambassador. Um, so I do have some context into this. <laughs> I would say they haven't really given US regulation a big concern like the other exchanges. In a way, they're kind of going through the same mindset like Binance did, I would say. Binance didn't really try to get US regulated until later on. Binance's growth strategy was ask for permission, uh, grow big and ask for forgiveness later. So I feel like lots of other exchanges in the crypto space have kind of followed that same model of let's just get as many users as possible. And once we're big, then we'll look into regulation and compliance and all that stuff. Because doing it is definitely expensive. I mean, because we're, we're going through the same thing with applying to the SEC for token metrics. And man, that's the things we, we have to do is, man. And, and, but the high barrier to entry is what makes it worth it. Because once you get it, man, you stand out from everybody else. And people can see that. And for us, we're trying to build a platform that gives people trust. 
And what other what better way of doing it than going through and getting registered and qualified with the SEC? So, I mean, definitely not cheap. I know me personally, or us personally, legal fees way over six figures. I mean, we're, we're, we're having a bear market just on, on legal fees. <laughs> but why isn't KeyCoin doing it? I mean, I, I can't really speak for KeyCoin on their behalf. I'll just say, I think they're planning to ask for forgiveness later and they're, they're trying to grab market share. So they see that, okay, Binance has kicked away US investors. Uh, Bitmax, I did go to Bitmax's offices in Times Square and I was very impressed. We went there to meet their team. We we're doing some business development for, for MetaHash be, before getting them onto Bitmax. So people always ask, what do advisors do? Well, we helped the MetaHash, MetaHash get into Bitmax. And that means it was during consensus week, we called them up, went to their offices, nice view right there in the middle of Times Square. And I was like, okay, these guys are doing something if their headquarters are right here in, in New York. So just uh, long story short, I think they'll, they will get regulation down the line. I think they just chose not to do it. Maybe they don't have the resources to go through all the legal work of getting compliant with the SEC and other regulators. Have you heard of Loki and have you seen the products they have been putting out? It seems like Loki has been putting out real world use products compared to top 50 projects with no mainnet yet. Um, which Loki are you talking about? <laughs> uh, I do watch Vikings, the, the TV show, and there's a Loki in there. <laughs> uh, yes, I have heard of Loki. I've, I've not looked into it much. Uh, actually, let's see here. Let me see if we added this in the system. No, we don't have it in the system. Let's search. Okay, what do they say? Loki is a private, secure, and untraceable digital currency based on the crypto note protocol. I would say submit submit Loki to our feedback page here. So just go to feedback.tokometrics.com. You should be able to log in with your Tokenmetrics account and submit, and then we'll have the community vote on it. If we get enough community votes, then our team will look into it because we get so many requests. We have to have some kind of sun for a way to sort them and start with the ones people want the most. So I would say submit Loki, and if it does well in the votes, our team will look into it. All right, uh, so back here to the... AMA. Hi, Ian. Token metrics is looking awesome. Thank you. When we hit full bull market after the halving, people will regret not getting in the token metrics now while it's open to everyone. Just wanted to make a comment. Hey, thank you for the kind words. Definitely appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, so yes, we, we've launched token metrics. And, and a bear market, basically, at least for alts. For alt. so Bitcoin is still up year to date. So Bitcoin technically is not in a bear market. But for altcoins, we've, we launched token metrics when it's not alt season. Imagine when alt season comes back, because we think it's coming back. Markets move in cycles. They don't die forever and ever. So when it comes back, token metrics is going to be something people need. I mean, because we've done customer re research the old spreadsheet we had was viewed 1 million times when Bitcoin was at 19,000, 20,000. Imagine we've now built something a lot better. That's not just for ICOs because ICOs have kind of died, but covers tokens trading on exchanges. Tokens trading on exchanges. I mean, where can you go and get a list of the best cryptocurrencies right now based on over 74 data points, based on the fundamental analysis? We have people going through manually scoring these projects based on fundamentals, technology, code reviews, technical analysis, and we're constantly adding other data points. So we think this, for anybody out there, any investor who's looking to do research, this gives you the best time to value. You can come in here without wasting hours and hours researching a bunch of altcoins. We tell you the best ones right now and why. 
So one of the things why I didn't like why people were, were saying Hex was a, a scam because calling something a scam is lazy. Anybody can call something a scam. Our job is not to call something a scam. Our job is to tell you why something sucks and be definite as to why it sucks. So for, the, so for example, with Hex, we can tell you that we're not bullish on this cryptocurrency, but as opposed to, as opposed to telling you it's a scam, we tell you the technology grade is a 50% for us. The fundamentals are under 40%. And we can go through and tell you exactly why. So we have a method, we have a system. And people who call something scam blindly don't have any system. Those are not the investors who make money in crypto. That's why they don't get the 100Xs. So for us, yes, we, we could, could have just said this was a scam, but we said, no, we went through, did the actual due diligence. And we said, okay, looking at the fundamentals, mark, yes, it has good marketing and all that. Development is, is not quite there. No liquidity, good marketing. Reputation is not good. The team is not good. Security, okay, it, it, it has that. Then we go through and did an actual code review. Our Paresh, our, our developer, he got onto a call and spoke with the guy who wrote the smart contract for Hex and just grilled him and grilled him and grilled him. And we take all, the, all, all that research and we package that into this report on Hex so that our audience, the subscribers know, okay, do you see this? This is the summary of the technology. These are different questions we've asked, we've gone through. I mean, basically the, the team is anonymous. The GitHub is bad, but it, we can tell you why it's bad. We can tell you it's bad because although they have good commenting in the code, the, they don't have much test coverage in the, in the code. They aren't really testing much. So how do you know there aren't any, any bugs in there or the main, Right, so we've thought all this out and we make it very consumable so somebody can just go in here and in less than 50, 15 minutes have substance, a substantive review on a cryptocurrency. So we're not just telling you it's a scam. We're telling you the score sucks and, and this is because of X, Y, and Z. Because if you can't define why X, Y, and Z, how do you really do research? Because sometimes some things could look like a scam because that's why we were able to be the first early investors in Wabi pre-ICO before anybody believed because we did our research at that time. And the same thing, if we're trying to find the next Wabi, the next 100X investment, sometimes it could look, look like a scam. So we, we can't go in there with any prejudices. We have to go in there with a, a clean mind, no assumptions, and just look at the data and the research. And once we're done, then we determine our grade. So yes, I mean, so con congratulations to everybody who subscribed, especially to those who stayed on after the 14 day trial. Hope you guys like the content we're putting out and the best is yet to come. This is just the, this is just phase one of Tokenmetrics. We have lots of other phases coming. We've, we've mentioned the Robo Advisor. We have other things in the works that we can't really discuss, but just know that those who got in early and subscribed the future, there's lots of potential in the future. But that's that's all I'll say. Otherwise, I may, I may uh, break some laws. <laughs> I'll stop there. Amazon accepts BTC. They do directly. I haven't seen that option. I I know people can use websites to to buy gift cards with BTC, but I haven't really seen the, anything on Amazon where you can you can pay with BTC. That I've not seen. Uh, if I'm mistaken, let me know. Kevin says, just bought Ethereum and Bitcoin. Cool, cool. Uh, no, it does not cost money to sign up for Tokenmetrics. You can do the free trial. We don't charge you until the trial is over, which is two weeks and 14 days. Is DeFi the same as STO? Uh, no, no. So DeFi stands for decentralized finance and STO stands for security token offering. So the, the two are different. The two different categories. I mean, you could possibly say an STO it falls under decentralized finance, but really when people are talking about decentralized finance, the many 
speaking about lending for the most part. That, that, that's the, the category that has really taken off. So they're speaking about projects like synthetics, which is a decentralized derivatives exchange, basically. It's kind of like a decentralized BitMEX or Bybit or platforms like Compound, which is decentralized lending. So DeFi, which is short for decentralized finance, means that there is no central authority. So there isn't a central company like, like a Binance or whatever where there's one throat to choke. There, there is no central entity. It's kind of like taking what IDEX did with the, the decentralized exchanges, the DEXs, but doing other things like lending, other exchanges, what have you. That's what DeFi means. So for example, we, we disclosure, we're equity investors in a company called Alchemy. Alchemy.network is their site. They're basically doing decentralized market making. So le letting people who have assets, so they, they use the word DeFi. So they let people, they basically provide market making in a decentralized manner. So definitely one that got our interest. This is our only investment in the DeFi space, uh, but that space is trending, definitely trending and definitely one to keep an eye on. Would love BTC to go down to 3K again. Oh man, I mean, people will cry. <laughs> it depends when you bought in. That's the main thing. Uh, for those who bought in at 14K or even 19K, they would cry. But uh, for those who got in a lot later or those who are on the sidelines looking to buy in, that would be good. Uh, for me though, I'm tired of waiting. I want Bitcoin to go to 20K, 100K, a million to the moon and beyond. I'm tired of waiting. So next question. Hi, how are you? Next is going to list BTC. They already have ETH and NEO projects, plus it's a security token. In the future, do you think it will perform? Next, um, I don't believe so. I think, let me see if we have next in here. Yeah, I think we, yeah, we, we, we scored hex a while back and didn't score so well. So fundamentals, technology, technical analysis, uh, long-term, we're not bullish on next. Now, don't think this is just our opinion based on the data and the models. We're obviously never perfect. We could be wrong, but based on our research, we're not bullish on it long-term. Now, if, if you're looking for a DEX, synthetics, which is one of the best performing cryptocurrencies out there, that's a better DeFi solution because the technology is solid. Uh, our team has looked into it and it's, it's a solid technology. Uh, fundamentals could be better. Technicals, uh, not there right now, but I would rather look into this if you're looking for a DeFi solution or exchange solution or just Binance. I mean, Binance is, Binance is still king. Decent fundamentals, good tech, technical analysis. So, oh guys, we, we are working on building or looking into building a token metrics index. If this is something you guys like, uh, definitely go and vote that up on by going to the feedback site. So let me put in everything here. And let's vote by newest. So I did add this. So do you guys think it's a good idea for us to add index funds based on grades? So imagine creating an index fund that holds the top 10 overall grades and then having one for just for, fun, for fundamentals, one just for technology and one just for TA. And then being able to take those fund, that index fund and rebalance that weekly, monthly, quarterly. I think this is something that's of value because the value of that is we can then take that fund and put it into the robo advisor. And now this is really like an ETF or like a mutual fund. So as opposed to having to 
come in and do research every single week, every day, you can put your investing on our autopilot. You can tell token metrics, you know what? Just get me the, the show me or get me the top 10 cryptocurrencies based on the score and update that every single week, every quarter, every whatever time frame on autopilot. And it takes care of that for you. So when the score of Bitcoin goes down, it sells some Bitcoin for something else that comes in. If we add block stack here, guess what? It updates that. If we add something else, it updates. I think that's the future of investing. And that's why we've built token metrics because we think this is something that's going to disrupt crypto and take crypto mainstream. But anyway, I can't really get too much into it, uh, but I definitely recommend you go and to our site and check out some of these other source resources we have. So if you go down here to the bottom, we have the token, met we have the webinar. You can just click on that or just sign up here. And we, we go into detail for about two hours long. So just sign up for that. We talk for two hours, almost two hours, just about 100 minutes into our vision for token metrics. If you've not seen the web webinar yet, uh, if you sign up for, for the trial, you should get an email sending the, the link to you. But if you haven't done that yet, definitely recommend you sign up for this. Uh, I mean, cause what you get is a ton of information. And then also the, actually, we also have a, like a, an ebook or like white paper. If you just click the tokenometric story, this we're still working on. Uh, for now, ignore this, this has to be updated. Uh, but if you, if you just sign up for here, it should give you the, the ebook as well. The ebook is about 13 pages and they're all free. And I, I think they give you a better idea of what token metrics is, is really building. All right, so back to the, to the AMA. All right, what does token metrics say about XRP Ripple? All right, let's, let's pull up XRP. XRP raised $200 million for the Series C. I mean, talk about printing money. Okay, so Ripple, we're, we're not so optimistic on it. We're, we're bearish. Fundamental is not there. Technology is, is decent, actually, actually decent to good. And technical is not quite there. It's, it's many, many, many of the, the fundamentals. So if we go to the fundamentals here, the, it didn't scroll well on, it's, it's not scarce. They had tokens sold in the earlier rounds at a huge discount, basically the, like the, the, the pre-mine. Uh, yeah, I, I think the data at pre-mine as well that people that ha has really ruined the sentiment around the project initially. Development, so development, they launched the company very quickly before before it was around for a while, and they did an IEO. It almost went straight to well, an ICO rather. But there is liquidity; it is available on lots of exchanges. They've had some scandals in the past. It's not really decentralized. They have less than one hundred nodes. Uh, so that's kind of that for fundamentals, uh, but. Feel free to go through and look at this profile in detail on tokenmetrics.com. All right. Well, I think that was the last question here on Mentimeter. Uh, now, let me head over to the comments and see what other comments people have. Is this live? Yes, this is live, Africana Crypto. Welcome to the live stream. Donald Gibson, I am not seeing that on the website. Um, I'm not sure what you're talking about. What about Neblio? Neblio, we've not looked into it yet, but definitely submit that at uh, feedback.tokematrix.com. Hey, what's up? I'm good. Doing good. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I'm just trying to read these comments going backwards. <laughs> Sorry. Maybe I should start that somewhere at the top. 
Okay. Hey, what's up, DJ Dukes? Thanks for joining. Book it down, Bronx in the house. When is the next pump and dump coin? Uh, I, I don't know what when the next one is. Uh, let's see here. Zilliqa. Zilliqa is, is definitely one to keep an eye on. Let me go back to sharing my screen. Put on some music. Uh, Zilliqa. So Zilliqa was out of the top 10. It's, it's top 20. This is our score right now in real time for Zilliqa. So technology is good. Good tech. Fundamental is also pretty pretty decent. Technical analysis is just not there. But definitely it's top 10 projects. So it's, it's not too bad. Definitely not too bad. Made money for people who who got into got into it when it launched in 2020 i mean i'm not not 2020 in uh 2018 sorry so zillica is definitely one to keep an eye on uh let's see here i see blockstack doing two or three dumps downtrend coming yeah possibly possibly so ian what are your views on nucleus vision well i mean nucleus vision has unfortunately not not performed well uh, if we if we scored this now, I don't think it would score as highly because our system has improved. Just bought Ethereum and Bitcoin. What exchange is Blackstack? It's on Binance. Floki and the Vikings. Yeah, man, dude, I love Vikings. I'm a huge fan. I've watched every single episode. I haven't watched the one from this week. Floki, oh man, Ragnar, <laughs> uh, and all the... Good show, very good show. But I prefer, I, I like Game of Thrones a lot better than, than Vikings. For those who haven't seen Vikings, it's kind of like the, the poor man's Game of Thrones. It basically gets you by when Game of Thrones is not, not around. But it's a show, it's a good show in its own right. Van Halla? <laughs> Van Halla. Exactly, it will fill up very fast. Arriving late, is it a good time to buy coins? Well, it depends what you're buying and how much you're buying. But what I would say is check out tokenmetrics.com and see our guidance on coins. Are you guys buying in this deep? No, I mean, I'm, I'm not buying anything right now. I'm on the sidelines. I'm just building. Uh, I'm building. Uh, so main, the two main things I work on, tokenmetrics and 100x advisors. So token metrics, we're just working with the team every single day, five, sometimes six, seven days a week, constantly just looking to make the product better, better and better. Um, then 100X Advisors, just looking for other ways to, to innovate in, in terms of what we're currently doing. So I haven't really bought anything. I haven't bought any crypto in over a year. I mean, because... Since you haven't bought any cryptos since 2017, because I mean, once I'm, I, I put in about $90,000 in 2017, and that turned to over 5 million at the peak. Then it went down to 4 million, and then, then, then I got hacked, lost two and a half million. Then uh, crypto went, kept on tanking and tanking uh, and all that stuff. So, I mean, once I, I had over six figures to sometimes seven figures, I didn't really put more money into crypto. I was just taking profits and reinvesting that. So I haven't really had to buy anything. So I would say when you're starting out, yes, you buy crypto, but once you have success and you're making money on those investments, you take profits and you, you cash them out to fiat, to dollars or whatever currency you're in, and the rest you reinvest. So I've just been reinvesting what, what I do. And then I also built a business in crypto, 100X Advisors. For, so for consulting, sometimes we get paid in, in, in Bitcoin or Ethereum or, or what have you. But uh, and, and, and the bear market, I mean, most people, most people aren't, aren't really paying. <laughs> uh, but anyway, that's, that's, that's not for this show. 
what do you like for decentralized exchanges? Uh, well, Jay, uh, I mentioned synthetics is one to look into. That's really about it. I, I mean, for those without tokens, I mean, IDEX is the main DEX around. All the others haven't really panned out. Uh, I was an, an investor and advisor to resistance, but that ended up being complete trash. Uh, we, so we, we, we had a, a falling out with the project because we're, we're telling them like, guys, this is trash, <laughs> basically. Uh, so we ended up leaving that project, so not working with them anymore. Uh, unfortunately, uh, it, some people did invest and it didn't do well. So definitely sorry for, uh, sorry for that. I apologize for that. Uh, but in terms of DEXs, IDEX is the main one most people use to, today still. Uh, there's BitShares, BitShares. Yeah, how is BitShares doing anyway? I haven't looked into that project in, in forever. BitShares. That, that was the one Dan Larimar started and, and left. BitShares. Okay. I wonder if we, I think we should have this in, in our system as well. BitShares. Yeah, we do have this in the system. So technology is, is decent, but fundamentals, not, not, not really there because it's, it's decentralized. <laughs> so it's not gonna have, that's one of the downsides of being really decentralized is you don't have people who can do things for you. Now with other projects like Bitcoin and, and others and uh, Ethereum, they have foundations and their ecosystems are huge because they, they, they kind of had a first mover advantage being early on. Uh, BitShares should have had a first mover advantage, but the last of other things. Uh, but other than that, I, I would just say for DEXs, there aren't really many that I truly believe on. I mean, I've never used a DEX in a, well, actually I have used a DEX, but I haven't rather, I've not used a DEX in a while, in over two years. So after Ether Delta got hacked, they had that issue where I think it was a MetaMask or, or, or some other thing where people's private keys were being leaked. Ever since then, I never want to touch a DEX. So if something is on a DEX, I usually just take the L. Uh, but then things, things could, could, could always change. The last DEX I used was Ether Delta to sell Dragon Chain. Dragon Chain, when it launched, it did a 5X. So I sold my initial and then the rest I sold on, I think was Bittrex, might've been Bittrex and like ADX. I mean, talk about what a time to be alive. <laughs> right, so yeah, but that's the last time I ever touched a, a DEX. I get what you mean from investing and watching your brain evolve. Bitcoin is growing super fast now. Yeah, absolutely, Kevin. I see it growing. What about doing exchange rankings? Um, that, that's a tough one to say. I mean, because we rank exchanges if they have tokens. So Qcoin, Qcoin is in here. <laughs> and the score is not so good. <laughs> Fundamentals, technology, technical analysis. Yeah, so actually, let me see. No, okay, now, now, sorry. So this is in regards to the token. So not, not really the exchange, it's about their token. So the, the token smart contract, I believe in the code. But I mean, it's, it's just a token. I wonder what, it, let me see if we have any other exchanges. Bitmax token. Yeah, this one we've not finished putting in the score. So that one, that one we can't really score. Um, what other exchange has a token? Now, I mean, so in terms of exchange rankings, they're really, here are, in, in our opinion, the legit exchanges. Binance, I would, I would still keep KuCoin on there. KuCoin, Hubi. OKX, um, depending what you're trading, Bitrex, this is just purely in terms of liquidity, in terms of having legit, well, not somewhat legit trading volume. 
and obviously Coinbase, Gemini, all the US exchanges because they have to follow regulation. So for us, the rankings are mainly, I would say, look at the rankings done by Bitwise. The report, that was a pretty good report. That would be invaluable. Okay, I mean, if you guys really like it, put, put that in on Inc. Submit that to feedback.tokenmetrics.com. Let us know what you guys think. Uh, this is a way for us to, to get input from you guys and, and girls. So if you really value that, if the community says, hey, give us exchange rankings and the votes are overwhelming, then we'll do that. We'll, we'll uh, make it happen for sure. Okay, I see. Can you go over this again briefly? Sorry, I'm kind of catching up here on the YouTube comments. So I'm not sure what some of these comments are about. You were one of the lucky 64, congratulations. So if you missed out, uh, we do have other coupon codes available. The last one we gave out was crypto family. That's all caps, crypto family, one word. That gets you 10% off on tokenmetrics.com. So just go to tokenmetrics.com, click here to start your, your free trial or, and, and create an account. You get 14 days free trial. And if you enter, enter in that code, you get 10% off after that. So I definitely highly recommend you take advantage of that because we'll not have those coupon codes out forever and ever. Eventually we'll, we'll cut them off. Hey, what's up guys? Matic bounced back, any opinions on it? Yes, I mean, Matic, I expected Matic to bounce back because the dump that happened to it was a black swan event. It wasn't really, the fundamentals hadn't really changed. It was just somebody dumping, somebody liquidating because the technology is still good. The fundamentals are, are good. So Matic was bound to bounce back, just like Big Sean. So if anything, it, I think the, the move though is to look at the TA, the, the technical analysis. So wait for things to turn bullish and then get in. So this was the, the big dump on, on the 10th. And then this, yeah, this kind of messed things up as well here. I think we're missing some data informatic we'll have to look into that but when it when this turns bullish then all systems go i mean all systems go so speaking of, of when things turn bullish uh i think people somebody submitted having alerts am i able to search here or not uh alerts uh, notification. Yes. Yeah. So somebody did add this and we're going to have to make this happen. So when something, so you'll be able to fo follow a crypto cryptocurrency and when it changes to bullish or bearish or what, what have you, we'll send notifications, browser, email, text, etc., that tell you, Hey, Now's the time to get in, or hey, now's the time to sell. So it looks like we have, we have lots of interest in this. So we'll, we'll make that something planned. Let me see. Yeah, so there you go, guys. This is now going to the planned pile. So if you go to our roadmap here, we have different things we've been adding here. So we'll add that there. Thank you guys for the input. Definitely appreciate the, the input. Crypto family, helping make the platform better for all of us. And I think that definitely would be something of value because imagine, because I, we, we definitely understand not everybody can follow this every single day. So imagine, we, we, imagine you have this in your portfolio or your watch list. So right now in this model portfolio, we have Binance. Let's say Binance changes to a, what is it now? It's right, right, right now it's neutral. Let's say it changes to a buy. 
or, or, or to bullish, he would send you an email, heck, it, maybe even text message if you guys like that. <laughs> so you can run to your screen and put in your order. Or let's say it goes to a sell. To a sell. So I think that's something that would definitely be very, very valuable. So I'll have our team prioritize that. Time for African crypto wallet. Yeah, man, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, look into Cubidex. It's an African exchange trying to become the, the Binance of Africa. They have a, they have a, a partnership with InterSwitch Bank, I believe, which lets them have fiat gateways with lots of different African countries. Okay, next from CC, the market needs to move forward towards a proper use case driven approach to speculation trading. Half of, half, half of these coins are just moving for the sake of moving despite news and progress. Uh, fully agree, F fully agree. The market has to mature. And one of the first steps is having proper data, having proper research and tools. Uh, I, I still think it's going to take a while, but with more regulation, the market should get better and better. Melvin, hey Mel Melvin, welcome. If all you could afford is crypto with 0 0.05 value, what coin would you buy? Is that Bitcoin, 0 0.05 Bitcoin, BTC? Uh, so I'll rephrase the question. I'll say, if I, if I only had 100 bucks to buy something, I mean, my, my strategy right now would not change. My strategy would stay the same. So what I would do, I would come to Tokyo Metrics, make my free account, like I would sign up for the 14 day free trial and look at the top 10 coins. And I would probably, if I had $100, I would put 10 bucks in each or some kind of way. Ideally, I would, I would do a, a grade weighted or even pre, yeah, probably even price weighted type of index or portfolio. So for example, let me see if I can pull this up. Just give me one second, guys. So we were working on a on an index, and I think I think the community is gonna like this. So let me open this in a new tab because this answers that question. So we're calling this the Token Metrics Moon Index. So hypothetically, it would it would work something like this. So we'll go through and have the top. 10 cryptocurrencies based on grades. So the last time I was working on this in a spreadsheet, we had, let me see if I can zoom in here to make it easier for everybody to view. So, yeah. So we have Ethereum, Bitcoin, Blockstack, Dash, Zcash, Eternity, Binance, Making Dow, Neo, Cardano. Uh, the ratings have shifted. Bitcoin is now back up to being a, ranked higher than Ethereum, the grades have shifted, but overall the, the concept is the same. Would, I would have, we would have an index with the top 10 portfolios, I mean, uh, cryptocurrencies based on overall score. Then the weight would be determined by the grade. So this, uh, so basically we would just add up the, the, the grades and this would be the, the so this, this is a grade weighted index. Now, from talking to our team and to Bill, we have to change this to be a price-weighted index because grade-weighted isn't really helping much. So I have to go through here and add the market caps. So that way, it's based on market. So we filter out all the cryptocurrencies and find the top 10 best ones. And then we create an index based on the market cap weight. So obviously, Bitcoin will be the, the largest holding in your portfolio but you would also have exposure to the other altcoins. So we think this is probably the, a good way to go, but right now we're still in the research phase. We're still in the experimental phase. So looking at this grade weighted portfolio, it would just, it would mainly be, the differences aren't, aren't too drastic. So from the lowest rated coin, in this case, Cardano, it would be 9.5% of, of your portfolio. And the highest weighted coin at, the, at this point in time, Ethereum, would be 10.9%. But 
but if we shift this to something like, uh, let, let me just take a look here real quick. Let me go back here. Because if, if you look, if you see market, uh, coin market cap, they, they do theirs based on, on market cap. So we're different in the sense we're, we're filtering this everything out and focusing purely on grades because something like Bitcoin Cash, it's not going to be in our portfolio. <laughs> so, because, because, but while something like Tezos, although good, I see it's over a billion market cap, maybe now is not the time. So, for us, we factor lots of other data points. So, we're factoring in the fundamentals, the technology, and the technical analysis, all of that. But hypothetically, let, let's just put in some, some random numbers here. So, let's say, let me. Let me just try something real quick. Actually, let me just, this will be a lot easier to try out. And then change this to D. Okay. Um, all right. Just give me a minute here. Okay, but all right, there we go. Now let's say Bitcoin is 140. Boom, do you see how that changes? Now, Blockstack is, let's say it's like a million. It's, it's not even a hundred million. Actually, yeah, that's it. Yeah, okay, that might not work then. <laughs> because, okay, let me just kind of go through this some more and see. Um, actually, let's say all these other ones are a million, actually are a billion. So most of your portfolio would be in Bitcoin. So that's kind of the issue. We're, we're trying to kind of go between grade and market cap and all that. Because uh, with indexes, you, you kind of have several ways of doing it. You, you, could, you could do it. You could, you could do a price based index based on the price of the cryptocurrency. You could do a market weighted index. Or you could do something kind of like we have here, a grade weighted. So it's Stay tuned, more research has to be done on this, but we think if, if, if we can do something that kind of takes everything into account and has is a good balance, I mean, that's how we're calling it the token metrics moon index. <laughs> and then we're thinking of having other indexes as well. So token metrics fundamental index, purely just based on fundamental grade. So for those that only care about the fundamentals, or oh, let's say you only care about the technology. So having purely cryptocurrencies that have the best technology. So this is a pretty, pretty good list. And then we're thinking of creating one called the direct index. Uh, let me know in the comments if you think that's a good idea. So for those that like to short, telling you what cryptocurrencies are going to get wrecked so you could possibly short them or, or just get out. And, and then maybe this is where it gets very interesting. <laughs> I may be playing my card too much, <laughs> but since if, if you're watching this far, this is a nice Easter egg. What if we got the token metrics indexes and made them available on exchanges? Think about that for a minute. I mean, so people are busy talking about ETFs, ETF that. We're low key building our own ETF in a way. I mean, because if you go to crypto, I mean, to coin market cap here, I believe they have indexes. Let me see. I, I, I saw indexes somewhere. Let me s do a search. No? Because I, 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 let me, maybe it's up here. A bit wise. Uh, 
Okay, maybe they don't. Because if anybody knows where the coin market cap indexes are. All right, let me, let me just search for this on Google. Google is our friend, coin market cap index. Okay, yeah, here, I found it. Yeah, because coin market cap kind of has something similar. So I'm not sure why I didn't see it on the, on the, on the top page. So coinmarketcap.com slash indices. So this is the, their index that they have. And I think this, they make this of, actually, this is, a, this is a different company, I believe. And these are available on Bloomberg Terminal. So, but I mean, that really, that's the future people. Um, yeah. So let me know what you think about that. If you think that would be something helpful, but that's kind of where our, our mind's at and what we're doing. Crypto Radio, I want to work as a researcher with your team. How can I do that? Thanks. Uh, yeah, thank you for the interest. Uh, I mean, unfortunately, right now we're, uh, the, the budget is tight. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it is a bear market, so we're not necessarily uh, hiring. Uh, or, or, or we don't really have any, any paid roles at the moment. Uh, but if you just if you just if you're still interested in just working with us, uh, just as uh, as in some kind of in some kind of other capacity, uh, definitely send me an email at ian at tokenmetrics.com. Just that's ian at tokenmetrics.com. Or just even I mean uh, I know we did have a careers page, but that hasn't really we haven't really done any hires at the moment just because we've been busy building. Uh, but we did have a careers page. Let me see if this has to be updated because this, yeah, so this was our career page we had a while back. But yeah, just either, I would say, so for anybody out there who wants to just work with us on research, this is not like any kind of paid role, just like, uh, you help us, we help you with whatever you're working on. This, 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 is, this assumes you're qualified. <laughs> so does that mean this is not for everybody? Uh, but let's say you, you're, you're, an, you're an expert when it comes to data science, for example. Maybe we, we have you talk with our data scientists and see if there are ways for you guys to work together, for example. Or let's say you are a very, very good developer who's worked for a, a, a well-known company like Google, Facebook, Amazon. Basically, if, if you are an all-star and you want, you want to work with us in some capacity, uh, not, not paid, uh, and you think we, we could help you with something you're, you're working on, reach out. So kind of like, um, I guess the term is pro bono or you help us, we help you. So definitely open to ideas like that. I mean, like for example, Sam, who's now our paid fundamental analyst, he began as a as a Telegram admin, as a basically an intern, non-paid for like six months. But I mean, he was doing good work. Uh, I, I knew he had a skill set. He had a degree in finance and e economics. He was a team player. Got to know him over a while. And then I when when, when uh, a position opened up, we were doing the crypto world tour where I was traveling a lot and didn't really have time to do all that research. I said, you know what, let me bring somebody on the team. And that's when I looked around and I looked at people I knew and had some experience working with. And I said, Sam, let's have a call. I wanna hire you. And the rest is history. He's now been with us for, for a bit. But yes, uh, definitely open to different ideas. So I would say email me, ian at tokenmetrics.com. Will, will we be able to buy coins on tokenmetrics in the future? In the future, yes, that's something we are trying to, to work towards. Uh, that, that's why we have to get the regulation with the SEC to become a robot advisor. But that is the vision. The vision down the line is that people 
you can go on Tok Tok Metrics, just like Coinbase, deposit your money to a qualified SEC regulated third party custodian. And when you deposit your money, we will do the investing for you on autopilot. So we can say, you know what? We'll manage rebalancing the investments for, for investing in the token metrics index. So if you want to invest in the index for the, the moon index, which, which basically takes the fundamental technology and technical analysis and combines them for the overall grade, we'll handle the rebalancing for you. So for example, let's say we have an eternity in here but eventually the score goes to a 50. As soon as that happens, well, based on the time frame that you have set, if you've set to rebalance once a week, every quarter, every month, every year, whatever, during, when, when the next rebalancing comes up, we'll rebalance for you. So this, score, this project will be deleted and will be, we'll then take the next best project. So all these other projects might move up Maybe we add a new token. Maybe we add something like uh, Casper. Boom, right? And the score of Casper, let's say, is an 80. This, all this will change. So that's kind of the idea. The, and the index is really the big vision, big picture. Because people have always been asking, hey, Ian, we want to invest with you. How can we do it? That's why we're building token metrics but we have to make sure we're doing it in a legal and compliant way because there are lots of regulations around. I mean, we can't legally take your money, but if we become a licensed investment advisor and build this platform with this technology and software, we can automate the entire thing. So, so all of us can benefit. So that's really the long-term vision. That's why I highly recommend if you have not signed up to tokenmetrics.com, you sign up today, right now. I mean, it's 14 day trial, it's free. Use the code crypto family, one word, all caps to sign up. And that's really the vision. Now, I'm not, I'm not even sure if I should say this, <laughs> uh, but people have been saying, Ian, why don't you create a token? Well, uh, all I can say is hypothetically, hypothetically, not, not, nothing confirmed, hypothetically. What if we made this moon index? What if we made this, what, what, what if we tokenized this? And you could get a cryptocurrency token that would give you ownership in this, in this index. So that's really almost like, like a mutual fund or ETF or, in, or actual index. So those we, our, our team is thinking about lots of different ways of doing this. But if that happens, imagine if we tokenize token metrics. I mean, or if we tokenize the moon index. <laughs> I mean, I think there are lots of possibilities. It gets me very, very excited about the potential of token metrics and for everybody who has joined the, the, the family who subscribed, all the customers. Thank you all, everybody for all the support. You're the ones who will, will give you updates and all, on the development and progress of all of this. But that's kind of, that's where, that's where we're headed. That's, that's really, that's how crypto goes mainstream. Because when you, if, you want, if, if you want to get somebody into crypto, just think about it. Not everybody is going to be going to Binance to day trade. I mean, if I want to get somebody who, who has never touched crypto before, do you tell them to go trade on Binance? Not really. I mean, typically you, you tell them go to Coinbase, buy cryptocurrencies and store in a wallet. But I mean, buy and hold does not work. Hodl does not work. We've seen that before. People bought Bitcoin at $19,000 just to see it go down to $3,000. Those people need active portfolio management. And that's why we're, we're building token metrics, because ideally you would have some kind of software, a robo advisor that will manage your portfolio for you. That does not mean day trading. That means it makes a few trades, anywhere from three to eight trades a year, as Bill says. So meaning that 
you, you aren't day trading every day or every week, but when you see Bitcoin at 19,000 and Token Metrics says, hey, 30 day price prediction, this, this, this is coming down, it will take care of selling for you. So right, that's kind of the idea. Because if talking, if you go here and it says, okay, you know what? Bitcoin is going down to 6,400, possibly as low as 4,800. We'll, we'll handle the portfolio management for you in the future. That's what we're building. That's why we're going through all the different compliance steps. It's definitely complex. I mean, it's, it's not easy uh, having to do all that stuff, having to, to do all kinds of paperwork and legal stuff with our lawyers. It's, it's a pain, but if we go through all that uh, and if, the, if we're fortunate enough for the regulators, the SEC to accept us, oh man, boy, will we be excited. But anyway, that's, that's, that's kind of the, the idea behind what we're building. All right, back to questions here from the, from the audience. I wish I could get your guidance on developing a crypto wallet for African market. Uh, I mean, unfortunately, I don't have much time to personally guide you. All I can say is, if you're going to build something for the crypto, for the African market, start with something open source. Technology is now open source. So I would say, just go to github.com search for crypto wallets, find something that's open source and use that as a, as a code base to start off with. I mean, cause why reinvent the wheel when you can leverage something that's already been done? I mean, cause lots of, there's lots of open source products out there. I'm pretty sure, actually let's do that right now. Let's do a search. Let's go to github.com. Okay, let me, what do I want to put in? All right, so here we go. We are on GitHub. I've put in crypto wallet. You just come in here, you put in the language you want to use. So do you want JavaScript? Do you want C++? Let's say we want a JavaScript wallet. Boom. Okay, we have some, some, Results here. Okay. Now, ideally, you want you want to sort based on those that have the the most stars. So that that, that means you want to find a project that's up to date, that's being updated regularly, not something that's not been updated in forever. So, for example, the first one that, that popped up, you see here, this is their site, Coin Cryptocurrency Wallet, Coin dot Space. The last commit was eight days ago. So you know the developer is actively updating this. And this works for, I'm seeing Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, Ripple, Stellar, EOS, Dogecoin, Dash. Let's take a look at their site. Okay, so yeah, so this is a, it's a Bitcoin wallet. I mean, it seems they even have a, mobile wallets. So I would definitely look into it. You still should have developers on your team who can go through and update the code because they use this as a template to start and then they build on top of it. And then you also want to have them test to make sure there are no bugs in this and there are no uh, holes in it because sometimes hackers do put some, 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 some bad stuff on here. So that's one wallet there. Let's say we want a, let's say Bitcoin wallet. Okay, Bitcoin wallet. So Electrum, there we go. Electrum is a very popular wallet for, for Bitcoin. Lots of wallets use Electrum. So guess what? Their code is open source. So this is the Electrum Bitcoin wallet. So you could just use this as, your, as a place to start. So I definitely recommend open source. Open source is the way to go. I mean, that most cryptocurrencies are open source. So, I mean, Bitcoin is open source. So you go in here. Okay, that's not, there we go. I want to search, yeah, Bitcoin. 
boom. You can download Bitcoin and make your own Bitcoin. That's how people made Dogecoin, Dash, all, all the others, the, the, the old forks of Bitcoin. Bitcoin Cash. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, so I definitely recommend start with open source. Uh, even bread wallet I'm seeing is in here. But that's what I would do. That, that is my advice. All right, Jarek. Hey, how are you? What are your thoughts on 1101? A uh, good question. So our team has looked into it now with this new score we have, and now that we have Paresh on the team, is technology-wise, it's not scoring so well, unfortunately, um, compared to the other partners we've ranked based on, on, on this new grading scale. Uh, they, they've they not ha had an IEO yet. Um, they, they did do token distribution to early investors. And disclosure, I was an early investor and advisor to the project. Um, but that, that's regardless of that, I'm just, I always keep things 1,000% honest and the technology per said the technology is, is, is not promising. Uh, now it's not trading anywhere yet. They should be trading somewhere soon. Uh, but that I don't know. Uh, I have reached out to the team for an update, so I'll have more. Uh, but that's really the thoughts we have on 1101. I don't. I don't think we've put in put that in the system yet. Uh, or, or if it is, the score is not finished. Okay. Yeah, I think right now we only have the fundamental score. Yeah. So the tech score was not finished because Paresh wanted to kind of go through and. and do a deep dive on the code. So that part is not finished yet. But yeah, that's, uh, that's the take on 1101 at the moment. How'd you hear, how'd you hear about ESPERS? Do you have it? Uh, I've not heard about ESPERS. It's not in our database. That one I've not heard of. You do a good job appreciating your time to help us. Thank you, Moonwalk. Thank you. I appreciate it as well. Thank you, guys. You just landed on the moon in the Lambo. Moon Lambo. Okay. Have you bought any more helium hotspots? Uh, no, I've not. I have one. I finally got it to work after after a while because I did order it, but I was traveling away for like a month when I came back. So now it's been running for about two to maybe three weeks. And man, I love it. I love it actually. Uh, my issue was I had to open up a port in my firewall on my router just for the Helium router because it wasn't connecting to the internet because of my firewall. So that, that was the issue, but they made an update where they now have that in the guides or instructions. And once I saw that, I, I, I quickly added that and it works. Uh, it's not trading anywhere yet. Once again, US projects aren't really trading anywhere. Yeah, I think it's not trading last time I checked Coin Market Cap. Um, but I like the mobile app. I check it every day and I, I get tokens. Actually, it is. Is it? No way. This is a different helium. Yeah. That's the wrong helium. <laughs> That's not the helium we're talking about. So the project we're talking about is helium.com. So it's basically, first of all, this is the easiest mining I've ever seen, minus the having to configure the, the hotspot, the router <laughs> port number. But assuming you don't have any firewall issues, it's plug and play. Just plug it in, hook up the mobile phone via Bluetooth, and you start sharing your internet connection to IoT devices and you get tokens. So I have it on all the time. Don't pull it out. There's, I'm just getting tokens all the time. And I hope one day those tokens are worth a lot of money. <laughs> Otherwise, what are we doing this for? So I'm not bad a second one because I mean, one seems good enough to me. Uh, the only thing I, I didn't like was having to, conf to configure the 
the port number because I missed out like two or three weeks of mining, probably even more because I was traveling for, for a month when I went to uh, Japan for DevCon and Malta and World Crypto, World Crypto, Crypto Con in Vegas. So I missed like five to six weeks. I could have been mining and that's when most of the money is made. But hopefully uh, it's not too late. Uh, hopefully it gets listed somewhere. Our team is reviewing this now and we're, we plan to put it into Tokyo metrics. Uh, let me see. Yeah, it's not in there now, but we think it should be in, in Tokyo metrics, the full review added by, by end of the month. So I would say, let's say one to two weeks. Uh, Sam told me he was almost done with it. And Paresh is also doing the tech review. Um, but I mean, it could, I mean, for me, I'm in, cause I already bought the hotspot. I already bought the hotspot. So I'm, I'm good. And for those who, who are wondering, it looks like this, this is the hotspot. I mean, I think this, this could have potential guys. Now, so let's wait until the official review is out, but this is what, it, what the mobile app looks like. I mean, I, it's very, very easy to use minus the, the hotspot, the port thing, but you plug it in just, just like any, if you've ever plugged in any router and set that up, you can set this up. And the fact that it's always mining and you're getting tokens, actually, let me see how, how many tokens I have. Let me see here. Um, I'm pulling up the mobile app here on my phone. But yeah, I mean, this is one to keep an eye on. Investors include Google Ventures, Kosla, Silicon Valley Angel. Okay, I gotta put in my, yeah, so I have, I only have 182 tokens. I'm getting about every 24 hours, let me see. Uh oh, I'm seeing Helium network outage. Because since they have a network outage. Anyway, that's not good. <laughs> that's not good for business. Okay, so I got about one token, uh, one, one HNT is their token, uh, uh, about four hours ago. Then one, about 1 1.5, about six hours ago. So every two or three hours, I get one, one token. So whatever that is, one, two, three, four, five. It's about five, six, seven tokens a day I'm getting. Um, so we'll see. I mean, it all depends on the price, but we'll have the official review up shortly. Okay, let me see if we have any other questions. I forgot about this. A good, good question. What are the benefits to the professional package in comparison to the investor plan? Very, very good. Uh, if we go here to subscription. So prof professional gives you everything in investor plus all the tokens outside the top 100. So for example, I don't think everybody has access to Blockstack. So, cause Blockstack, so we use the market cap for coin market cap. So now the top one, the top 100 on coin market cap is always shifting. Uh, if I go back, it's always shifting. So sometimes it's, it's musical chairs but we took a snapshot of the top 100 and we're always trying to add other coins in it. So you get access to the, these top 100 and all the other plans. If something, basically, basically the first page of coin market cap. If there's a cryptocurrency that's not on the first page, that's, that's on the second page, you, you, you don't get access to that unless you are on, where was I? Yeah. So, you don't, you, you don't, don't get access to that, but on professional plan you do. So you get TA for that. 
You get the fundamental analysis, the code reviews. So try to access Blackstack. If you're not on a professional plan, it's probably not going to appear for you. And then I would say our network, right? I mean, we have a network of, uh, we have a Telegram group of like-minded people. So you're basically finding the Telegram group includes people like, well, besides our team in there, we have other big names in the crypto space, people who have funds. Uh, so one person in there has a Bitcoin fund in, in uh, Philadelphia. One other person does quanti quantitative research company that does research to, to crypto funds. Uh, one person is a developer who's building uh, a platform kind of like chain analysis that does analytics and they, they study blockchain history and transactions. Uh, so he, he's, he, he's in the group, he's, he's, he's also a trader. We have other entrepreneurs, other people. Uh, one person is a, has a VC fund. So I would say people from all walks of life, one person is a PhD researcher. So it varies. So all, all I can say is think of it as, as the ultimate mastermind group. So people at a high, people are doing big things in the space or who have ambitions of doing big things in the space that you can network with because your network is your net worth, uh, as they say. So you can meet people in there who could change your life. So for example, one of the entrepreneurs, he's looking to launch his products next year. Well, guess what? He's, he's now, in, he's now in, the, in the circle. He has the right people who can help get his idea out. Whether it's us or other people in the group, he has the right people. So it all depends on what you make out of it. You also have investor calls, webinars. So every, every two weeks we have all of us get together on a Zoom call for an hour and we just share different ideas on how to make more money. So whether it's Bill talking about talking trading or Paresh talking about projects with great technology, whether it's Sam and me talking about fundamental analysis, whether we're talking about different things like books we read about how we read this book about hedge funds and trading and how market making is, is probably a good thing to get into because Goldman Sachs made most of his money, for example, early on through block trading. They, they almost practically invented block trading. And if you look at the Goldman Sachs annual report for 2018, the biggest business is market making. And I'm thinking to myself, huh, what if we made an algo market making? But, or, but anyway, lots of other things. We also share different opportunities on products we're looking in, sharing uh, deals here and there. If somebody wants an intro to a project, we'll do an introduction for them. So it's really a, 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 a group that's a family, a global group. So if you're, if you're traveling somewhere across the world, we'll connect you with somebody there. So I would say professional is really for somebody who is either a professional investor or aspires to be a professional investor. So if, if you don't really fit in that, in that segment, then it might not be for you. But hey, maybe you just care about having access to all the other tokens and you just want to invest in that. That's cool too. Then maybe the, that could work for you as well. So yeah, I mean, that's kind of what professional is. The investor plan is definitely the, the most popular, uh, but professional to my surprise has, has been pretty popular as well. Uh, actually a lot more popular than, than hodler. Most people we see are opting for either investor or, or professional. Okay, let's go to the next question. Will there be any coupons in the future? Yes, I mean, uh, I did give out the coupon, the crypto family coupon. Uh, <laughs> people always want coupons. Huh? <laughs> but hey, I mean, uh, it, is, it is coming. Christmas is right around the corner. So give me, give me a minute here. Let me see if I can, maybe I can issue a coupon for the, the hardware plan. Maybe we can do that. Uh, let's see here. I have to go into my dashboard. All right, so we're going to issue a coupon. 
just for the hardware plan. So if you have not joined the hardware plan, then we're going to give you a coupon. Let's see here. Let me make the coupon now. We'll call this Hodler Christmas. So, yeah, so Hodler Christmas 2019. And this will give you access to the Hodler plan for let's do what one year one year access so that's 240 bucks a year for the hardware plan so let's do that let me so this this will, this will give you 240 bucks off uh, okay now i'm going to make this redeemable until Christmas. So for those who are watching this live stream later on, after Christmas, you're out of luck. So yeah, Hardler Christmas, let me make sure I have the spelling right, 2019. <laughs> we have, uh, so we have people watching this all over, not just uh, on, on the Tokamtix YouTube. Uh, let me okay, let me create the coupon. Then I'm gonna put this in. Okay, yeah. So we're all set. I'm gonna type this into the comments so you all can see. All right. So there you go. Hodler Christmas 2019, all caps. That gives you the Hodler plan free for one year. That's $240 off. So to enter that code, just go to tokenmetrics.com, click sign up anywhere. So here, just click this to start your free trial. That takes you to a page to sign in. I'm already logged in, so it's not gonna do that. But once you go there, then it will take you to, to, to this page to subscribe. So just click this free for 14 days. And then there'll be a place for you to enter in the code. So copy and paste that code verbatim. And that will give you $240 off. And Merry Christmas, everybody. <laughs> we just landed on the moon and the land ball. Okay, uh, Val Shuk is saying, this is not fair to people who paid for Hodler. Uh, yes, yes, uh, you paid for Hodler. If you paid for Hodler, then message us in customer support and we'll, we'll, we'll add that code for you. So you, you'll get an extra year of Hodler after that. So basically you would get, so just contact customer, customer support. So down here at the bottom, contact customer support. So we can give you an extra year on top of whatever you already paid for, if, if that works, uh, or we can just use that to, to cover you. So just contact customer support if you already paid for hardware and we'll take care of you. All right, but yeah, I mean, I think that's a good way to really wrap up. Let's see here if we have any other questions. So yes, we have taken care of the coupons. Okay, next question. Can I use token metrics for day trading in the future? Uh, possibly, possibly. Uh, so when we launched the Robo Advisor, we may offer an option for it to, to rebalance your portfolio daily, but we think that, that might be way too much because there'll be so many trans, transactional fees. But so, I mean, the question is when you say day trading, do you mean token metrics doing that for you? Or do you mean using it to tell you what to trade? Because I think somebody, customer support is already pinging. <laughs> it was at you, uh, Val Shuk. <laughs> I'll, I'll uh, take care of that after the, the live stream. Okay, uh, I was saying, so if you go in here to, 
to BTC. So for example, if we're talking about manual trading, you shouldn't be able to do that even now, just kind of using this as a guide. But one thing we want to add is the section that tells you the, the actual target and the possible ROI. So similar to how a, a trading bond may tell you target one, target two, make this your stop limit or, or trailing stop or stop loss. So we want to add this to the price prediction page. And we think this will offer people a lot more value and will be a lot easier for them to understand how to use this. Because we think this is a very, very powerful feature of the price predictions. But we do understand it, it's not so easy to grasp how to read this. So we are working on that. So that would be more of manual trading. And the other trading would be the robo advisor, but that's not available yet. All right. Okay, uh, next question. What does fundamentals mean? Fundamentals, well, fundamentals come from fundamental analysis. So if you look at the stock market, fundamentals means that you aren't looking at the, at the price. You aren't, you aren't doing technical analysis. You're looking at, for, for when it comes to stocks, you're looking at the balance sheet, how much money they're making, all these different, different metrics, uh, the, like earnings per share. So we, we take that same approach for fundamental analysis and we apply it to cryptocurrencies, but it's slightly different. We're looking at the fundamentals of the project, not the technology, not the, the code, not the charts. We're looking at who are the team members behind this project? What's the idea? What's the vision? Where is it going? So if we go to Bitcoin, for example, and go to fundamentals, here we have all the different things we look at. So we look at the team. Then here we have the list of different questions we look at. So we look at what happened early on. What was the, the token sold at over 80% discount, meaning that it's gonna get dumped on? Uh, is, a, is, a, is a project decentralized or centralized, meaning that the community owns the majority of the, to of the, of the tokens? Um, did the team, early investors and advisors, did they lock up their tokens for, for more than six months when it began trading on exchanges? Is the token deflationary? Is there a token burn? Do they have customers and users? So just different things about the company and project as a whole that have nothing to do with the technology and nothing to do with the, the price action. So those are the different things we're looking at, technology, liquidity, marketing, the reputation, the team, the security. And we take all that to create a fundamental grade. So that's what we look at. All right. Okay. Um, I think that was the last question on here. Now let's go back here to YouTube. Okay, yes, we've taken care of that. So once again, that's Hardler Christmas 2019. That's only available until end of Christmas. Uh, if you already subscribed to the Hardler plan, just email me or, or, or rather, sorry, just contact us in customer support. Now, once again, even if you paid, you have to contact us before end of Christmas because uh, that, that's the whole point of a promotion. So contact us before end of Christmas. All right, so that should be going out to the 60 people who are live with us right now. What about balancing on the percentage of growth instead of the time frame? Percentage of growth? Um, I'd have to look into that. So you're talking about in, in terms of growth of the ROI? I'm not sure I understand, Alice, uh, but uh, DM me on, on Telegram. Thoughts on Doge as an oscillator? <laughs> Doge, Dogecoin? Uh, I'm not sure about Dogecoin. Uh, Dogecoin rating, let's take a look at that. Doge. Yeah, score is not so good, <laughs> but uh, no surprise here. It's, uh, it was a fork of Bitcoin with some, uh, with some catchy marketing. Why are the top analysts bullish on Decred? Uh, good question, G-Man. Well, I would say if we pull up Decred, so 
So fundamentals are good. Technology is decent. So fundamentals are good. Uh, just kind of based on the interest of time, uh, can't go through all the details, but check it out at tokenmetrics.com. If you haven't already, sign up for your free trial today. And I even gave out a coupon code, guys, so you definitely should sign up. Merry Christmas. Okay. Um, yes, yeah, so winner, there goes your, your membership there. Thank you, Jay. Wakanda token. <laughs> yes, Wakanda forever. Wakanda forever. All right, thank you, uh, Adugna. Hey, Patrick, how are you? Okay, I think that's most of the questions we have. Where can I go to see all the details of how to use the tokenometrics data? Very good question, very good question. So one of the things we made, we made a guided tour of people. So when you log in, you should see a guided tour that walks you through how to use tokenometrics. So when you create an account, there's a VIP tour by me that goes through step by step, takes you maybe about 10 minutes, walking you through how to fully use token metrics. And then I also have a video tour of it. If you just click down here and you go down here at the bottom, how to use token metrics, we have a video tour. You can also access this by just going to our help center. So just go to help.tokenmetrics.com. And I think if you go to FAQs, yes, Tokenmetrics tour. We put this a week ago. It's about 12 minutes long. I go through and walk you through how to use Tokenmetrics. So everybody should now be an expert on Tokenmetrics. And then this also gets sent to you as an email when you sign up. In the, in the first email, there should be a link to the tour. So this was something people were asking about. Uh, because if we go to the, the feedback here, people were saying we should add a user manual right here. So this technically is, is complete now with the video. So yes, that's, that's how you can use token metrics. RSR token, uh, we haven't finished grading that yet to my knowledge. Uh, Yes, we've not finished grading that. Actually, let me tell my team. I'll tell my team to add that to this because we are looking at, at more stable coins. So I'll have our team add that to the list. Alex says, hi, Ian. I put in the code for the hardware's plan and got the response at the bottom says payment is false. Did you copy and paste the code? Uh, let me take a look and see if it's working for people on my end. Copy and paste the code. Don't type it in because sometimes people, when they when they type it in, they maybe they have something wrong. Yes. Yeah, so two people have redeemed so far, so it's definitely working. So I would say Hodler Hodler Christmas twenty nineteen is the code. So definitely just copy and paste. That's that, that's going to be a lot easier for you. Okay. Yes, Merry Christmas, everybody, and Happy New Year. Kevin Castaneda, it says one that won't let me pay. It says 0 0.009. Okay, I'm not sure what exactly is going on because two, two people have already redeemed it with no issues. So copy and paste this code again. Okay, then contact us in customer support in the chat bot in the chat bot in the bottom right, and we'll, we'll take it. We'll 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 manually add the code on our end. All right, all right, guys. Thank you, everybody. It's been a great live stream. If you like this live stream, be sure to give it a thumbs up, like, and if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to Tokenmetrics.com. Free trial. Subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. Oh, and by the way, we also launched a podcast, which I forgot to tell everybody about. Uh, if we go back here, you go here, tokenmetrics.com slash podcast. You can get all our insights. <laughs> you can get all our insights on the go. 
So this gets posted to Spotify, Apple Podcast, Google, even this live stream. So we have a sound engineer who takes this live stream, chops it up to make it easier and, and, and faster to listen to, and puts this as a podcast that you can subscribe to. So I highly recommend you subscribe to Tokenmetrics Podcast. You can just search for us as well on Spotify, Google, or Apple, and get your crypto news and insights and analysis on the go. So if you're traveling, commuting to work, to school, if you're cleaning the house, going on a jog, you can listen to us 24 seven, wherever you go, because hey, the moon can happen anytime and you have to be ready. All right, with that being said, the moon is not the limit to the moon and beyond. I'll see you next time. Thank you all for watching.